Good evening, young people. Good evening. And young adults also. Now, this is a combined uh, fellowship because it's the last fellowship of the year. So, we praise the Lord for... Uh, nakakain ba kayo masarap? Nakakain ba kayo? Pareba ka natin mga Ypro. Sila nag-donate po yun. <laughs> Kanya-kanyang donation ng Ypro para mapakain po kayo. Now, before I start, we start... Uh, we have, we're gonna have two programs today. First is our worship and our uh, listening to His Word. And then second is our interaction. Now, bago ako magsimula, I'd like to give you an update because alam po nyo, we've been supporting Myra, right? For one year. The Vision of Hope, right? And most of them, dinalala po natin sa camp. Now, it's their time to really uh, give back by their appreciation sa kanilang mga child champion, katulad ng Bread from Heaven and all of you. Let me read you some of the letters that they, they wrote no, for their child champion. Dito na, one, one is, sabi niya, Salamat po sa tulong nyo na inalalahad ninyo sa amin. Salamat po dahil nakakakain kami ng maayos dito uh, at maayos din ang aming nasasuot. Uh, naway maging maayos po at maging masaya ang inyong Pasko. Naway maging masaya po kayo sa inyong buhay. Maraming salamat po. May isa naman nagsulat uh, ng parang ganito. No? Naggawa pa sila ng ganito. They really design it. I pray sana maging masaya ka po sa ngayong Pasko at sana magkaroon ka po ng time para makadalaw sa amin. And then, salamat po sa pagtulong nyo sa akin. Salamat po dahil hindi ka nagsawa, nagsasawa at nas- support, supportahan kami. Sana po hindi kayo magbago at sana hindi kayo magsawang tumulong po sa ibang batang katulad namin. And of course, they will say, I will always keep you on my prayer. Si Myra made this one. Ito yung programa ng mga girls. no uh, This one is a cup holder. And the good news is, ang coffee bean and tea leaves, alam mo yung coffee and tea leaves, yung coffee shop, they will partner with us. And they, their first, or ang Starbucks kasi, when you, ang signature nila is the, yung parang kape na may, ano, di ba? Yung kape, tawag dun? Yung coffee thing, pang take out, yun ang signature nila. Ang coffee bean and tea leaves, ang signature nilang cup is parang sports, may bakal, something like that. So, they will partner with us. They had their first order Na si, ang gagawa ay sila Mayra, mga ladies from Puy Puy Laguna, 1,500 piece of this by January. So they have to finish this. So ang start ng partnership natin with Coffee Bean and Tea Leaves. So this is something that, and all the profit, all the income will go to their savings. Yun po. Ang mga lalaki naman, Magdalena, they, some of them try to make this, kaya naman. But most of the lalaki, uh, guys from Magdalena Boys, sa Vision of Hope, they uh, spend time planting uh, papaya para mahagawa sila ng achara. So, ang promise ko is, ngayon ang sabihin, lahat ng officers and leaders makatanggap ng achara from them. Okay? Masarap po yung achara na nak- inubos ko na isang bat. Okay? <laughs> Masarap po gumawa sila ng achara. So, bago tayo magsimula, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we give thanks to you because of the incarnation of Christ. You are the reason why we have Christmas. You are the reason why we have life, we have hope, and you are the reason why we are saved. Therefore, as we come before you, our hearts rejoices in what you have done 2,000 years ago. Our, right, our heart continues to rejoice because the Savior has come, the Savior has died and rose again. And the Savior is seated in the highest place and where His kingdom will have no end. We are rejoicing because even in the time that we're waiting for your second coming, we already know that the battle has been won by the power of the cross, through the cross of Jesus Christ. Therefore, Panginoon, help us to, to live as victors in Jesus Christ, to live as a life with uh, such victory, even if we, we will learn to live in victory because you are, our God is a victorious King. Therefore, even tonight, we offer to you this time, lahat ng activity po namin, we pray for your presence in our midst. Lord, even sa singing pa lang, we can really experience your presence. Therefore, Lord, May you continue to sanctify this place, sanctify our hearts, and sanctify your servant. Help me, Father, to say what I should say and say, uh, not say what I should not say. Thank you, Lord. We give thanks to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every time we uh, talk about Christmas, the preacher will always talk about either Luke chapter 2 or Matthew chapter 2, meaning yung Christmas story about Jesus Christ. But you know, sometimes we need to hear a fresh revelation from the Lord when it comes to His message. Today, I'm going to talk about a very familiar story in Matthew chapter 2 about the birth of Jesus Christ. 
but you will hear a different insight of Matthew chapter 2. Kasi ang God, pag nireveal, iba ang siya mag-reveal. Uh, short lang message because we have another part 2 sa activities po natin. So, turn, ang title ng message natin is My Bethlehem Journey. So, let's turn, uh, look, look at our passage for today, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. Can you flash the, the verse? Matthew 2, verse 1 to 12. We're very familiar with this. Verse 2, after Jesus was born in, saan siya pinanganak? Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star, and when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod uh, heard this, he was disturbed. Kasi lang king eh. And all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, Judea they replied, for this is what the prophet has uh, written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, by are no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Sa nakuha tong verse na to? Yan ay nakuha sa Micah, sa Old Testament. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent uh, them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures, presented them uh, with he, him with gifts of gold, Francis, uh, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to their country by another route. May the Lord richly bless as we read this word. Anybody will say, Amen. Now, this is a very familiar Christmas story. Today, my topic, we're going to talk about my Bethlehem journey. Mga kapatid, this is the, this is the point. Why do you think Jesus Christ, being the Son of God, alam po natin mga sagot na, why did He chose to be incarnate? Why did he chose to be a man uh, in, in human likeness? Alam natin, to die for us, to, to die for his people. Alam po natin. Pero here is the question. Bakit niya isipan? Why did he chose to be born in Bethlehem? Alam natin bakit siya dumating, right? Because he came to save his people from their sins. That's a general answer. Tama naman. Why did he chose? Sa daming-daming lugar na pwede siya pay, pay, Pwede siya ipanganak. Bakit pa, bakit pa he chose Bethlehem? He's the son of God. He can control where he wants to be born. He can do that. I've been thinking that the whole night. Why did he chose Bethlehem as the place where he will, he, he, he will be born? What is the significance? Mga kapatid, this, this is the point. Why did Jesus chose Bethlehem as a place chose to be born in Bethlehem. Jesus chose to be born. And do sa Bethlehem, alam natin, there's no room, there's no place. Let me show you a picture. Nagaling ko sa Israel, I was shocked by seeing these things. Can you, can, I, can you flash the picture? Do you know what is this? Mga kapatid? Ano sa ginyo? Hula. Isang ice cream, hula. Parang cave. Pa, cave naman. Oo, oh, cave. Para sa kanin, kan, anong cave to? Para sa ano? Lions? Tiger? Ano? Bear? Ano? Ha? Huh? Mga kapatid, nagulat po ako. Sa mountain to nakita, ano sa mountain. Maginaw kasi, di ba, ang Israel. Moisiso na maginaw. Ito po yung sample ng isang sh- sheepfold. Ang mga sheep, mga lamb ay nakatago dyan. Hundred of them. Doon sila nagdudume, lahat-lahat na. Kung winter time, may shepherding pa rin. There's still shepherding. That is why kung maginaw, all of them went inside. This is more or less the exact place where Jesus was found. I'm talking about the sheepfold. If you notice, there's no... There, mabaho, 
mabaho sa loob. Kasi puro mga sheep, hundred of them, mga lama liliit, ganyan. So this one, every time there's winter, may shepherding pa rin, lumalabas sila, pag mag na sa gabi, ang mga sheep ay nandiyan sa loob. Therefore, therefore, when, people, when the scholars said, imposible ang Christmas, December, posible po. Kasi may shepherding nangyayari sa Christmas, sa December. Because meron silang ganitong ba, ganitong location. Now, mga kapatid, in Bethlehem, Beth- Bethlehem, sa, sa Bible, ang Old Testament, you cannot find the word Bethlehem because ang pangalan sa Old Testament is Ephra. Dun sa land ng Ephra na matay si Rachel, yung mahal na asawa ni uh, Jacob. So yung Ephra is a name of a town. Later, it became Bethlehem. Sa Old Testament, it's called Ephra. And yung, yung Bethlehem na yan, ibig sabihin ay house of bread. Okay? House of bread. Now, this place is a very insignificant town and village. Wala. So when they went there, at doon sinilang si Jesus Christ, mahirap po makahanap talaga ng lugar. Okay? Because it's a very few, there are very few villages and puro mga shepherd, all of these things. And mostly, dito si Jesus Christ, pinganak-anak. Doon sa loob na kabaho-baho ng mga lugar ng ganyan. If you notice, walang door. Kaya nga, Jesus Christ, when He said, I am the door of the, I am the door of the sheep. He is the one guarding. Kung hindi, kung hindi shepherd, the shepherd enters the door and the non-shepherd, the, the enemy, will definitely goes up and try to steal the lamb or the sheep. Kaya, when He talks about John chapter 10, you now can imagine when Jesus said, I am the doorkeeper. Kasi wala talagang door. Nagbabantay ang shepherd dyan para hindi makapasok ang kalaban. Ang kalaban will not enter the door. They will enter somewhere just to the wolf, all of these things, just to... So more or less, this is a, this is a sheepfold. More or less, dito si G- Jesus Christ, sample, dyan siya pinganak, dyan siya nakita ng mga uh, ng magi and the shepherd as well. No? This, why would he chose to be born in Bethlehem? in a manger where no one wants to welcome him in the inn? I'll tell you this, the answer. Jesus chose to be born in Bethlehem because because even in his birth as a Savior, meron siyang gusto turuan sa atin. The moment Jesus decided to become man and born through, through Virgin Mary, and he chose the place Bethlehem because yung pakapanganak pa lang Jesus Christ, yung birth, the birth of the Savior, there's something for us to learn. He wants us to learn something. The lesson, our lesson as Christians started in his birth. There is a lesson for us to learn. Three important truths I'd like to share to you about the, our Bethlehem journey. First, Bethlehem is a place I have no outline. Just, just listen to me. My, my message eh. A Bethlehem is, could be a place, could be a season in your life. It could be a place, it could be a season in your life, it could be a situation in your life where you, ex, you, you will experience the hardness of life. And Bethlehem represents a place, a season in your life, temporary or a journey or a situation in your life na maramdaman nyo napakahirap ng buhay. It's so hard. You experience rejection from people. Jesus Christ, there's no one wants to welcome Him. He has to stay there. Manger with the sheep, mabaho, all of these things. Wala kasing lugar. No one wants to welcome Him. That was the scenario. It is a place where you find a lot of rejection from people. Some of you started your Bethlehem when you were born. Pinanganak ka Bethlehem ng buhay mo. You recognize na parang bakit, parang ang daming kulang. Hindi ako naka-full, uh, hindi ako nakakain, bata pa lang ako, all of these things. Some of you were born with a Bethlehem journey already. Just like the people sa ating mga kapatidan sa child champion. And uh, this is also a place where sa sobrang hirap ng buhay, you que- you, you're going through something, you question life about your suffering. And there's no answer. Ulitin ko ha. What is a Bethlehem journey? 
Why would Jesus chose to be born in Bethlehem? He chose to be born in Bethlehem because His birth palang has something for us to learn. The birth of Christ, not His ministry, His birth, the birth of the Savior, is so significant that it has something for Christians to learn. First, we can learn Ang Bethlehem represents a place in a journey or a season in our life where we find life's hardest struggle. Dun sa season ng buhay natin, hirap na hirap tayo. Parang, parang si Jesus Christ, Mary and Joseph, walang lugar, rejection from people. We find life, even some of you experienced Bethlehem as umpisa pa lang when they were born. Hindi makakain ng tama, all of these things. There was so much fight in the house, all of these things. This is an experience of Bethlehem journey. Or sa workplace natin, we struggle so much. Or in short, it is a place where because life is so hard for us, we somehow question God, question ourselves, question people. We experience unfairness of this world. Bakit ang unfair? Bakit ako nangyayari sa akin to? Nangyayari, walang nangyayari sa kanya, may nangyayari sa akin to. This is the, the, the meaning of um, how Bethlehem represents our life. Second important tool I'd like to share to you this. But Bethlehem is God's prescribed place. It's God's divine place, divine uh, prescribed place where He will use, kagamitin ng God, to accomplish His purpose in your life. Even though Bethlehem is a place of hardship, it's a place of uh, rejection from people, it's a, pla- it's a place where you question your suffering and there's no answer to your, to your question, Bethlehem is, is also an, indeed a place, God's divine place, God's prescribed place that He will use, no, gagamitin niya, to accomplish His purpose in your life. Anong purpose ng Panginoon? Why Jesus Christ? Anong purpose ng Ama? Why Jesus Christ has to be born? God demonstrate this by the manner in which He sent His Son, Jesus, born in modesty and humility in a town called Bethlehem, and the Savior of this world, born in a field of animals, kasama mga animals. And ang kanyang mga first visitor ay hindi mga people that he, he that uh, ang unang kanyang first visitor in Luke chapter 2 ay mga unclean shepherd because they were rejected. They were outcasts. Ang kanyang unang king of the world, the king of heaven and earth came. Ang unang visitor niya, mga unclean shepherds according to society and the, and the foreigner from the Magi. Wala siya ibang visitor. And Jesus chose that. When Jesus chose to demonstrate that to us, what is He telling us? Your Bethlehem is God's prescribed place for God to do something in your life. For God, usually, ang purpose ng God is this. It is a place for God to purify you. It is a place for God to humble you. Sabi niya, I will instruct my people to walk humbly before me. God always choose the humblest things of life to accomplish His purpose in us. Therefore, when you experience Bethlehem, it is not just about hardship. The issue is not about hardship. The issue there is God's prescribed place for Him to accomplish whatever purpose that He desires in your life. His purpose always is to purify. His purpose is always to humble so that you can walk humbly before Him. Ang place si King, Ma- King Herod, gusto siya patayin. Hinahanap siya, di siya mahanap. Bethlehem indeed become a safest, safe, safest place. Minsan kala, kala natin, Panginoon, hirap na hirap ako sa situation ko. Bakit hindi ako makapunta dun sa kabilang journey ko? Why do you let me stuck in this situation? Bethlehem is also a place of protection. Sometimes I told the young people, or not even young people, not so young people, I said, when God says no to you, it doesn't mean He doesn't love you. When God put out some, put a stumbling block to your dreams, whatever is that, na hindi pa timing, whatever is that, it's not because God doesn't love you. It is because sometimes God uses your Bethlehem to protect you. Minsan, we will try to make decision, maging palpak tayo in the future, and God is saying, alam ko mangyayari sa'yo, kung hindi ka mahambol, kung hindi ka matuto yung humility, kung hindi ka ma-purify, you, your tendency to be able to make wrong decisions in, in the future is very, very high. Therefore, Bethlehem sometimes becomes a safe refuge for us. 
hindi lang natin alam yun. We sometimes grumble against our Bethlehem. Lord, bakit? Lord, bakit? All of these things. Without knowing that sometimes God uses our Bethlehem experience to protect us para hindi tayo magkamali sa pag-decide natin in the future. No, ulitin ko ha. Alam mo mga kapatid, Bethlehem sa panahon ng Old Testament, insignificant place. Sa panahon ni Jesus Christ, before He was born, Bethlehem is a place that no one wants to go. Kung kayo mag-tour, sabi ko nga, ang millennials, ang top three ang expenses nila is number one is travel. Number two, beauty or whatever. Pag lalaki gadget, number three, milk tea. Okay? Paki-edit na. <laughs> ang point ko dito is, never, if you want to go to travel, never ka before Jesus' time, never ang Bethlehem. Kasi wala makain, walang hotel, lahat wala. Ganon. When Jesus Christ came, what happened to Bethlehem? It became a very, very popular city until now. Lahat ng pupuntahan sa Israel, hindi pwede, hindi makapunta sa Bethlehem. You know why? Jesus Christ, when you let Christ work in your Bethlehem, what will happen now? Your story, your Bethlehem story becomes a significant story. And you will, Bethlehem now, your Bethlehem experience becomes very, very significant to a point that you will say to people, I will share to you my story. I will share to you my Bethlehem experience. Ulitin ko ah, because we are very short message, there are, there are three things like prayer. What, what does Bethlehem mean? Why did G- Jesus chose to be born in Bethlehem? Because His birth has something to tell us. Number one, Bethlehem represents our a place, a situation in life, a season in your life, temporary season, where you find life the hardest. Rejection from people because Jesus was rejected. You question your suffering and you cannot find any answer. The hardest journey that we ever will experience is our Bethlehem experience. Second important truth, Bethlehem also represents a God's prescribed place, God-ordained place, where He will choose that experience or that particular situation and that particular journey of your life to accomplish His purpose. Jesus Christ has to go through his Bethlehem experience. Be rejected and be born in this kind of uh, situation. Tayo, mga kapatid, usually when we have our Bethlehem experience, God is at work the most. Anong purpose? Purify us. To teach us something. To humble us. Because, and sometimes, most of the time, our Bethlehem becomes our safe refuge. Papatayin siya ni King Herod eh. The only place na safe na hindi siya makita, Bethlehem. God uses our Bethlehem in order to protect us to make wrong decision in the future. Ang servant kapag hindi broken, ang servant kapag hindi humble, ang servant kapag uh, mayabang, they cannot go very far. Sometimes, ang alam ng God kung saan tayo ipapurify, babaguhin, ihahumble. Kaya, when God fully accomplishes work in you through your Bethlehem, Bethlehem now becomes a significant part ng buhay mo. You will tell the people, importante na ang Bethlehem experience ko. Just like Bethlehem now. Dati, before Jesus' time, hindi siya pinupuntahan. Ngayon, after Jesus' time, Bethlehem is one of the top priority na kailangan puntahan. Because you know why? Jesus makes Bethlehem so important because of His birth. Third important truth, before we close. Bethlehem is also a place in a season in your life where you will encounter God the most. The shepherd saw and returned to their field, glorifying and praising God for all things they have heard and seen. Imagine, ang unang visitor ni Jesus Christ, the shepherd. The Magi, when they saw the star and found the child, they rejoiced exceedingly and bowed down and worshipped Him. Bethlehem journey is painful but it is also a journey in your life where God will work the most. It is also the journey in your life that God, that you will encounter God the most because only in Bethlehem they can found the child. Only in Bethlehem they can found and encounter Jesus Christ. The shepherds found Jesus in Bethlehem. The Pharisees did not. The Magi found Jesus Christ in Bethlehem. Ibig sabihin, mga kapatid, meron ka bang Bethlehem experience? God is saying to you, 
I have never left you. I have never abandoned you. The most painful encounter is Bethlehem. But the most powerful work of God is in our Bethlehem. And the most encounter that we have with the Lord is in Bethlehem. Diba? Ganun ang God parating. They rejoice exceedingly and bow down and worship Him. When God has fully revealed His work in your Bethlehem journey, then that's a time you will realize your Bethlehem becomes significant part of your journey in life, just like the Bethlehem now. Brothers and sisters, before I close, Bethlehem may be a place of our temporary suffering and hardship, but Bethlehem also reminds us that God is doing something and is using our Bethlehem experience to accomplish something in our life. Bethlehem also reminds us that the presence of God has never left us. Later, but why is Bethlehem? Many years ago, ang tawag sa kanya, house of bread. Jesus came as a savior and Jesus said in John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. Alam mo, ang ganda pag-aralan yung map ng Israel. Yung mga places ng Israel, may significant uh, meaning yan sa pagladating ni ng savior. 200 years ago, ang Kapernum ay nandyan na. Kapernum means comfort. Num village. Village of comfort. Jesus Christ spent most of his three years in Kapernum. 400 years before he was born, the place was named Kapernum, meaning village of comfort. Walang comforter. He came after 400 years and he became the comforter of Kapernum. So, ang significant ng Israel is always the places that we see and all of these things has really a meaning kasi it all reflects the coming of the Messiah. Ulitin ko ah, ang Bethlehem is a journey temporary in your life. You experience pain, rejection, no one wants to welcome you, all of these things. But Bethlehem is also a God's prescribed journey, place in your life that He will accomplish His purpose. Ginagamit ng God yung Bethlehem mo para ma-purify ka, para ma-humble ka so that we walk humble before Him. Bethlehem is also a place where you experience refuge kasi papatayin ka kapag hindi ka mahanap sa, nahanap ka sa iba. Bethlehem, it becomes a place of protection. We complain to God about our suffering, but God said, I'm protecting you for you to be able and equip you for you to have right decision, not to uh, uh, make wrong decision in the future. Third, Bethlehem is also a place you encounter God the most. The Magi and the Shepherd found Jesus in Bethlehem. There's no other place, only in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is a place, masakit man, but it's also a place you can experience Christ the most. Because never kanya in abundance, never kanya in one. Amen po ba? Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Panginoon, we give thanks to you. Even if we go through our own Bethlehem experience, it's a very, very painful journey pains about life, hardship about life, pains about our suffering that there's no, there's no answer. But you comfort us by saying to us that our Bethlehem is your prescribed place. It's God's prescribed journey that, uh, that allows us to see you working in us and through us. Bethlehem is the place where we will be purified. Bethlehem is a place we will be so molded by God that we can be like Him. Bethlehem is a place where we will see God's power working in us, God's sufficient grace. Thank you for Bethlehem because Bethlehem is the place where Jesus chose to be born. Bethlehem is also a place where your presence is um, that we will can encounter you the most. I pray for everyone especially who are going through their Bethlehem experience. Help them not to grumble. Help them to trust that Bethlehem experience is a necessity for every believer because God wanted to accomplish His purpose to the humblest things of this world, to the most uh, 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 painful things God chose to accomplish His purpose by making us more like Jesus Christ by equipping us and by leading us to inherit a blessings that we can handle. 
Also, Lord, I ask once again for the deep revelation of your presence. Hindi lang bawat sa amin, but even sa bawat ang aming kapatidan sa child champion. That even if they are still living in their Bethlehem, even as they, uh, until now, because of you, you will allow them, you will allow, allow all of us to experience you most, knowing that, Panginoon, because of you, we are not shaken. I have set the Lord continually before me because He is at my right hand. I will never be shaken. May you uphold everyone who is going their, to their own Bethlehem. Uphold them, O oh God, with your righteous right hand. I ask once again, O Holy Spirit, may you once again uphold every Bethlehem experience, every Bethlehem journey in our life. Uphold that, Lord, with your righteous right hand. Let your make presence known as we trust that you will go, do perfectly what you want to accomplish in our life. We praise you, O oh God. Thank you for being our bread of life. We praise you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.